Hi there, welcome along to Talking Dirt, fueled by Monster Energy. It's the official talk show, the last in the series of the FIM World Speedway Championship. We've enjoyed four super weekends of the Grand Prix series. Hope you've enjoyed it as well. But it's time to go to the team element of the sport and the Monster Energy FIM Speedway of Nations. So let's have a team element to the top of the show. And who else is going to join me but Mr. Kelvin Tatum? Hi, Nigel. Good to see you, Kelv. Yeah, um, and you. Yeah, and it's a big weekend ahead. We're, we're really looking forward to it. So why don't we have a, a Speedway of Nations theme in the studio as well? Let's change the background, shall we? Wow, you've done some hard yards there, Nigel. Well done. Are you impressed? I am indeed. What about the Grand Prix series, Kelv? Just reflecting on that before we move on to the Speedway of Nations. Bartosz Schmarslik has become the first pole to win the individual world championship more than once and I don't think anybody can argue with that. He was magnificent, wasn't he? He was. He was the outstanding rider. He won half of the rounds um, and although it got pretty tight there on the second night in Torrent, I've got to say when it really mattered he came through. It was a mark of a champion, you know, and that semi-final particularly on the Saturday night. So a deserved winner. A good series overall, four good weekends, back-to-back -back Friday, Saturday, we like yeah, it. Uh, we do like it. The back-to-back -back weekends have worked, I think, uh, eight rounds of exciting stuff. I think only one round which was slightly below par was the first night in Prague, but apart from that, um, the racing was outstanding. Yeah, brilliant. Let's hope uh, for more of the same in the Monster Energy FAM Speedway of Nations tonight. It's going to be uh, a terrific night of action. So, let's take a look now. What's coming up in the show? Kelvin's Tech Talk looks at rider clothing and protection, and along with the Tatum Telestrator, can't wait to see that, giving us an in-depth look into team riding. We open the vaults to some Speedway of Nations moments, and Kiri will be live in Lublin with all the updates from the track as she catches up with some of the teams. So, a busy show coming up then, Kelv. It is, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yep, let's crack on. Competition time is first up, and Chris Holder, the 2012 world champion, has been setting you all a challenge this week. I know a lot of you have got involved in this via the website and social media, and it's brilliant. Let's hand over to the man himself, Chris Holder, to explain all. Hey guys, Chris Holder here. Your chance to design your own Speedway Nations front cover. The winner will get a replica version of their design, and I'll pick the winner. Just use the hashtag HolderChallenge for your chance to enter. Well, we were out of luck last night. The rain came down at just the wrong time. The riders were changed, they were ready to go. Lots of on-track discussions, but unfortunately, the rain won the day, which means we're down to a one-off meeting now. So let's remind you how the 2020 Monster Energy FIM Speedway of Nations works. Seven nations in a one-off world final now, remember. The top scorers after 21 races go straight through to the grand final. There's a grand final qualifier, a last chance race off if you like for second and third. The winners of that join the highest scorers in the final to determine the world champions. Here's how the scoring system works for the Speedway of Nations. It's new for this year, four points for a win, three for second, two for third and nothing for finishing last. Second and third place would get five points. If you win a heat but also finish last, only four points. Now, it's all about the art of team riding, and let's give you an example, perfect example of team riding from years gone by in the Speedway of Nations. Let's hand over to Kelvin now, who's at the Tatum Telestrator. Over to you, Kelv. Speedway of Nations brings us team riding, a new dynamic to international speedway. For those of you who have watched lots of league racing, of course, apologies to you, you know this inside out. But for international speedway, it's brand new, and I've got some clips here that we can take a look at. We'll look at the first clip here, which is Sweden versus Italy, and it's a straightforward bit of team riding. Um, you'll watch as they get away here, the inside rider, Antonio Limbach, just about now, spot on there, we can just highlight him here, and also actually see where he's actually looking towards his partner, who's Freddie Lindgren. And this is a classic bit of team riding because he is now in a position where he realizes, as I run it through, that he doesn't want to move out and block his teammate. He allows him to come round. We'll stop it there. And you can now see they're in the absolutely perfect position for a 7-2. That's the new scoring. And they can then get a maximum score. Uh, a straightforward bit of team riding, but crucial for this particular type of discipline. Our second clip is uh, Great Britain up against Russia. It was uh, a couple of years ago from the very first Speedway of Nations. And uh, away they go and they roar into the first corner. 
Young Robert Lambert on the inside, uh, who was very inexperienced at this stage, but uh, was riding beyond his years. He's on the inside there. And of course, we've got the world champion coming up alongside him, his partner, Ty Woofenden. We run it on through. At this stage, it looks like they're reasonably in charge of this race, but it's, it's a tight one. Uh, the Russians behind are fast, in particular the rider in the white helmet colour, Artem Laguta. He's coming on very strong indeed. I'll stop it there and just highlight him so you can just see exactly the rider that we need to keep an eye on because he has a major role to play in this. At this stage of the race, we are in charge. We're on seven points, Great Britain. But Ty Woofenden now is beginning to realise that they're under pressure. He's beginning to look around. There's no question that he's feeling the pressure from the rider behind him. And as they're exiting turn four here on uh, lap two, we can see, if we're just highlighting there, that he's having a sneaky look over to Artem Laguta because that's halfway through the race approximately and it's critical because he realises they're not going quite fast enough and the pressure is on. And they're rushing through again. We're just about hanging on there, but it's really tight as we can see. Wolfenden beginning to work big time again. He's trying to control it, but Lagut has got more speed. They desperately want to hang on to those seven points, but the Russian has got other ideas. And you can see once again, he's just about getting into the mix of it. Again here, very, very tight again, because he's carrying more speed. And the, the rider in front of him there in the red helmet color, Wolfenden, is desperately trying to protect this seven points that they can score. We're running it on through. Again, looking around, working hard, as we're coming to the very latter stages of this race now. They've done all the hard yards, but not quite enough, because Mr. Laguta there steals the show on the run to the line. And you can see how, how tough that team racing was there. And it just didn't quite work out as hard as those Brits worked there because they were trying to control the race. They slowed down and that allowed Mr. Laguta to come through. So team riding, um, all sorts of dynamics to it. Yeah, great stuff. Thanks for that, Kel. Superbly explained and a great demonstration of the art of team riding. And it really is an art in itself. Right, time to head over to Lublin now. We go across to our reporter, Kiri Bloor, for the latest. Over to you, Kiri. Thanks so much, Nigel, and welcome to Lublin. Now, we're in the Old Town in another beautiful square. Now, we're just on the Ukraine border, around about 170 kilometres southeast of the capital city of Warsaw. As you can see, the weather is not great. We're all bundled up and ready for the cold. Well, this has got quite a big population here, and this is a big tourist trap. Well, anyway, enough of me sightseeing. It's probably time that I get out of the wet and down to that stadium. So I'll see you there, Nigel and Calvin. Australia have got some work to do here. Peterson's failed off. Matson really working hard in third place. He's got some speed. Crikey, he's got some speed. He's looking for a way through. Now he switches to the inside. Oh, he's yeah. going to Done up. He's in the front. What a ride for Matson. What a ride! Can you believe it? Holden out throws it oh, right towards brilliant. Matson. He's come from nowhere. And that is a sensational ride from Leon Matson to the line for Denmark. Oh, that was a fabulous ride. Great Britain on a 5-1. They can't do it, can they? Fabulous stuff from Great Britain there. What a start from Lambert. Wolfram and riding an absolutely fabulous race out in front. Lagutas on the outside. Side foods it up on the inside. They're about to charge into the last lap. Can Hat Lambert hang on in second place? Wolfram and riding beautifully there to slow the pace down. Lagutas on to put the brakes on. Down the back straight. Fantastic stuff. Into the closing stages. Wolfram Dunn with the lead. Oh, Lagutas coming through. Oh. Wolfenden's held on. It's just held on. He's going to try the inside run. They're all getting close together. Wolfenden for Great Britain. Wolfenden on the inside has to lock the bike. Now he's going to come back for more. Do not stop that yet. Britain are on a 4 2 here. It's Wolfenden with the lead. Do not second. Lambert third, but Janowski's coming. And do not still in the contention. Fabulous race out in Side Wolfram and Riley once again fabulously well to get the better of Dudek. Robert Lambert in third place is under an awful lot of pressure from Janowski. Janowski winding it on around the outside. Lambert is vulnerable. Now down the back straight. Janowski does him on the inside. And three on to the two teams. Not good enough for Poland, I fear. Well, it's 
Great stuff from the vaults there of uh, Speedway of Nations over the last couple of years. Hope you enjoyed that. It's that time of week now where it's Tatum's Tech Talk. The man alongside me has produced this and I know you've enjoyed it, Cal. Yes, it's been terrific. Um, giving people a little bit more insight into what actually goes on at the track. Um, you know, there are several areas that can be manipulated and I think it's worked really well. Yeah, great stuff inside the workshop. And the last in the series is all about riders' clothing and protection. Over to Kel. Hi everyone and welcome to Tatum's Tech Talk. It's our final episode and we've had a tremendous amount of fun doing it. We focused on the bike and of course the setup throughout uh, the equipment there. But now we want to look at uh, what the boys actually wear when they're out there racing and uh, taking their lives in their hands. Um, We've got the body armour and there have been some uh, significant improvements in this uh, area, there's no doubt about that. You've got shoulder and elbow protections, there's a little bit in the chest area as well. Um, quite possibly the most important part of this though is actually the protection to your spine, the back protector itself. Um, when I first started riding there were an awful lot of guys didn't even wear one of these. Um, to be perfectly honest though, you can't go on track without one. So yes, this is a nice jacket that you put on. Also then we move on to knee braces. Um, of course, knee injuries can be very uncomfortable, so this is a, something that could prevent that if you fall awkwardly. Um, as I say, another important part. And a, a, another area that really has improved quite dramatically. Um, so uh, that's pretty much across the board now, guys are wearing those. Uh, boots, everybody wears boots. A conventional right boot, um, no real surprises there. But when we come to the left-hand side, um, we've got the steel shoe on, which enables you the left foot to slide across the surface on the entrance to the corner. But as a consequence, there is no heel on this side, so that's important to, uh, to see, and that is very specific to our sport of speedway. Obviously, there is the top dressing, the suit itself, that goes over all the body armour. Um, it's a Kevlar material. It is now strictly regulated by the governing body now. Previously, it wasn't. We actually had suits with nylon in, which caused all sorts of problems when guys were crashing and getting burns and quite some severe injuries. So that's been outlawed and this is now very much the norm. Um, so yes, that is the classic Kevlar suit that goes over the armour. Um, helmets, of course, off-road helmet, that's pretty much uh, standard there. And of course then onto the two different options when you come to actually the goggle and tear-offs. This is a conventional tear-off system. You see the little film here. And the second option here is, of course, is the roll-off system with the two canisters on the right and the left-hand side of the goggle. It's got a film that goes across. You pull the toggle, that pulls the film across and enables you to keep seeing where you're going. And then finally, I, I want to take a look at the neck brace. Um, we're seeing more of the young guys wearing these. It's not a compulsory item, but it is something that uh, one or two of the guys are beginning to look at quite seriously. All in all, hugely important to have the right gear on, quite clearly it is. You've got the right gear when you hit the deck, and you are going to hit the deck from time to time. You want to be wearing the right gear. Now, the Speedway season is coming to a close. This is the last international action of the year this weekend, the Monster Energy FIM Speedway of Nations, which is a shame, of course. It's been a shortened year, and let's hope that we can have a full calendar in 2021. However, all eyes were on the Polish Extra Liga last weekend, and Lezno have beaten Gorzhov over two legs, and that's their fourth successive Extra Liga title. Kelvin, what an achievement that was. It's fantastic. Um, it was close after the first leg uh, that was held in Gorzhov and they came out uh, just two points in it, 46 to 44. Um, but on the return leg in Lezno itself, they just ran away with it, 59 to 30. Um, there were some surprising scores. You know, Schmalzleg only got a couple of points, but um, Lezno, very impressive again. Yep, congratulations to Lezno then. Can anybody beat them and end their winning run? in 2021. Let's head back to Lublin now and here's Kiri. Thanks so much Calvin and Nigel and welcome to Lublin. This is the noise we've waited two days to hear. The bikes are roaring. We are getting ready to go racing. There is a little bit of rain in the sky but things are looking promising down here but I can assure you of one thing. It's very loud and it's very very cold but joining me. <laughs> Okay, uh, well, conditions are certainly 
different to uh, being on the beach in Bondi here in Lublin, but uh, we've got challenging uh, conditions with the track. We have an inspection with the, uh, the Bill Morris, the race director. We're about to go up with all the team managers to have the final discussion for the uh, practice, a warm-up they call it. So every team will go out and have one run. So we'll see how it goes from there. But with the COVID-19 this year, everything's been a challenge and I see tonight being no different. I'd love to know what you just said then, but it's so noisy in here. How's the team looking? That, that, uh, the, our team's looking great. You know, we've, um, we're up for this. We've been in, we've had the same team for the last three years. We, we've led on day one before in Russia, so we know what to experience. We know that the goalposts have slightly changed within one day now, but you know, we're confident. We've got a process that we want to follow. The boys now just go out, have to go out there and deliver. Okay, thanks so much, Mark. Now, yesterday we talked to the captains, so let's hear from them, starting with Rob Lambert. Oh, you know, everything is possible. That's a long, long way away. Uh, you know, we've got two days of it. So, um, yeah, we just stay focused throughout, score points, um, you know, no last places. And, um, yeah, we uh, keep our fingers crossed and uh, see what we can do. Ah, uh, you know, if we coming here, you know, it's fighting for sure some uh, for the, some good place, good place, and uh, we will see. You know, it's, it's weather is look so cold, and the uh, track is uh, not yet ready. So uh, we will see. You know, it's how will be decision. You know, so uh, hopefully, you now it's not be rain. Yes, exactly, because uh, Czech Republic is in the final. It is a good chance for the, for the for the team, and uh, yeah, I think uh, hard racing, but. We we can the uh, we can the uh, medal. Well, I think our aim uh, uh, at first is to get a medal. You know, we uh, we haven't got a medal in the Spiro Nation so far this year. So we we've done it, so uh, it's the first goal. Yeah, yeah, it's nice and uh, chilly here at the moment. We um, our expectations this uh, season in the in in the, in the whole tournament is to win it. Um, we're only coming for gold and. It's going to be tough, but we, we've got to aim high after getting bronze last year in, in Togliati. So that's that's the main goal. Uh, the boys are really excited about um, being riding for Team uh, Team Australia anyway. Yeah, I think like most of the other guys, so, uh, our hopes are obviously to, to win the gold, but it's going to be tough. There's a lot of good teams here to, today and tomorrow. So the, the team that hit the form and, and maybe have a little bit of luck can win the gold and hopefully that can be us. Hello everyone. Yeah, I'm uh, very nice feeling after world champion in the tournament, but today so another day and say so we'll see what happened and I'm making everything so good for the team Poland and uh, yeah, we'll see what happened the last uh, last uh, hit. But this moment I don't know what the, what happened with the track and we'll see. Well, yes it is. All engines are raging here in the pit day. It's looking very likely. Um, it's, it's been so tough to know what's going to happen, like not only with the weather, but with the coronavirus situation. So the goalposts have been moving the whole time, but our riders have been, been really good. They've kind of um, stuck together and they've been positive throughout. So fingers crossed, we'll, we'll get going soon. OK, now tell me about your side. It's probably the youngest team that Great Britain have ever fielded. It's very exciting to have such a young talent coming through Great Britain. Yeah, it's a, it's a really exciting time to be team manager. Um, and I, I think with the conditions, it, it helps us that we've got a young team because they're enthusiastic and, and possibly braver. Um, so, like I said, their, their attitude throughout has been, been perfect. And, um, and I do think their age helps you know, in, in that respect. Okay, now you've been clever. You've used Dan in the under-21 position, which means he can ride every race out there. So a bit of team tactics already coming into play. Yeah, that was the plan. Like as soon as as soon as Woofy got injured and we knew we couldn't use him. In, in reality, Dan Bewley is our second best rider in the in Great Britain. So he's 
by, by running him at under 21, like you say. We can use him in every race. Um, whether we do or not, we'll see, but it's, it's looking likely. Amazing. All right, thank you so much, Oliver. We'll leave it there because I know how noisy it is. OK, well, the rain's coming down a bit, but let's hope we go racing, Nigel and Cal. Back here in London, looking forward to tonight's Monster Energy FIM Speedway of Nations one-off world final. Brilliant stuff, we can't wait. Now, throughout the week, you've been sending in your competition entries to design uh, Speedway of Nations handlebar fork covers, and we have seen some terrific stuff uh, sent in from you all. Really some stunning efforts. Uh, great work from everybody who entered, who joined in, some stunning entries. Now Scott Gubberson is our winner, there's the winning entry, congratulations to you Scott. Kelvin alongside me, some real talent out there for designing. Yeah it was, uh, it was terrific effort from Scott because the standards were really high and I've got to say that um, it wasn't easy to pick the winners but um, Scott's done very well for himself there. I think everybody did well, we saw some great examples there so well done to you all, pat yourselves on the back, brilliant effort and thanks to everybody who's entered our competition throughout this shortened season which is what it is of course even shorter after we lost last night to the rain uh, but it really has been superb now big news over the last few days particularly for this man to my right if we just look over his right shoulder you'll see the promo for a brand new book which is coming out in time for the christmas market tales from the top draw top draw <laughs> the autobiography of kelvin tatum MBE, we must remember that bit, um, and it's out, it's available to pre-order now, um, but Kelvin, you've already had some wonderful feedback in terms of feedback from uh, Twitter, your, your yeah. social media feed. Yeah, it's been overwhelming the response to the book, um, I'm delighted, and uh, you're never quite sure how it's going to go down, but yes, the response initially has been terrific. Um, you and I have been working really hard through the summer with the pandemic on. It's given us the opportunity to really kick on with it. It's something I've wanted to do. I asked you before, you didn't have enough time. This summer has given us the opportunity to do that. So yeah, we've cracked on and it's been terrific just looking back on um, the, the career starting at Wimbledon and then moving forward to Poland and Sweden and the, the world long track stuff and all the stories that happen along the way. It's been, it's been great. Yeah, and including being arrested and uh, marched away from a Polish roadside by a Polish police officer, leaving his pregnant wife, Debbie, all alone in the car on the roadside. Yeah. And remarkable stories like that. Having your hip rebuilt, um, Paul Anker's a specialist, saving your career, you yeah. thought it was all over. I mean, there's just some remarkable tales. Uh, also about your son Oliver as well, sure. who's autistic. It's quite emotional, isn't it? Carl? Yeah, it's multifaceted. Um, uh, an in-depth look at you know our lives away from the track as well as on track, and the highs and lows. Everybody has their ups and downs, of course. But you know um, there are times when you really have to dig in and come back from a serious injury, like you said, with Paul Anker's helping me a lot uh, back in 2000. So yeah. Um, uh, delighted and, and fingers crossed it'll all be systems go for Christmas time. And a very proud moment for you and the family when you headed to Buckingham Palace. Yeah, that was uh, extra special. A shock initially to get the letter from Downing Street uh, and then to go to the palace to receive the MBE from the Queen was extra special. Tales from the top draw then is due to be out for print on December the 1st. It's online orders only at the moment. Can't really get out and about and do book signings like you'd want to, Kelvin, and, no, and go on tour. So it's online orders right now at curtis-sport.com. Go to the book section and place your order and you'll have it in time for Christmas. Brilliant stuff. Looking forward to it. It's a yeah, really it. exciting project. Now, what about tonight? A one-off world final. How's it going to go? What are your thoughts? Well, you've got to look at the Russians. They, they've won the last two times. Conditions will be different, of course. It's cold. It's later in the year. Uh, fingers crossed that uh, they can race really properly. Um, they are terrific, Laguta and Saifutinov together. I think the Aussies come into this meeting um, red hot. Um, they're bo all three of their riders are in good form. And I think that helps enormously. And it's a, it's a team effort, of course. Yeah, brilliant. It's, um, it's going to be a great night. Australia looked good, I agree with you. Let's talk about Great Britain though, Kelv, because 
obviously no Ty Woffenden. They're relying on the youngsters, aren't they? Yes, it will be a tremendous experience for Drew Kemp. There's no question about that. Dan Bewley, who has been riding in Poland this year and has got going lately on Ty Woffenden's equipment. So we hope he can do something with that. It is a big blow to lose uh, the quality of a rider of like Ty Woffenden. I think with him, they would have been a, a genuine chance for gold here. But, um, you know, look, I, I, I want them to do well. Um, it's difficult to really predict quite how they're going to go, but I'm sure they'll go home richer for the experience. And it's all down to a one-off world final. Originally, back in May, we were due to have two qualifiers. Sure. We were, to, we were due at Manchester for a two-day final. This was going to be a two-day final. No Germany, of course. They, no. couldn't, they couldn't get here. Um, Czech Republic uh, come in. Um, and now we're down to, it's all down to tonight and a one-off world final, so it's a shortened season. As was the Grand Prix, of course, four weekends. And this is the last in our series. Reflecting on everything before tonight now, Kelv, I think the sport has done very, very well to get a season on that it has. Yeah, it's been a great effort by everybody concerned. The World Championship was terrific. We saw eight fantastic rounds of speedway. The double headers worked really nicely. Bartosz Schmalzlik coming out on top. You know, he won four of the eight rounds. He was the, the, the outstanding rider of the series and he was, to retain his championship was uh, a special effort. Now, thanks to everybody who's got in touch via social media uh, to give us all your feedback on Talking Dirt. It's been a brand new project for this year. Something good that has come out of a shocking yeah. year here, for here. the world. It's been brilliant. We've really enjoyed bringing you Talking Dirt, uh, fueled by Monster Energy. Uh, thanks for all your positive comments week in and week out. And uh, it's been a great show to work on. We're going to head off to commentary now for the final time this yep. season. We're looking forward to the one-off world final to find out who will win the 2020 Monster Energy FIM Speedway of Nations. We're on World Feed commentary, so wherever you are in the world, get onto your local broadcaster, enjoy the action. We're live from 6 p.m. UK time, um, and wherever we are around the world, it's gonna be great. Enjoy the evening, take care during the winter, happy Christmas, and see you next year. <laughs>